A user-defined feature is a set of features that you may create often and therefore you define them as a single feature to add. This can be a great time saver when modeling the features as repetitive. The tools for creating, managing, and inserting user-defined features, or UDS for short, are located in the Developer tab, User-Defined Group, which displays as a drop-down. Before defining a UDF, I'll zoom into the feature as a snapshot will be taken. It's this boss here. Now I'll select Wizard from the User-Defined Feature Group. The first page of the wizard displays with a wireframe snapshot. UDFs do use some legacy methods, but remain very useful as a modeling practice. The library option is currently set to no library. You don't need to select the library, but then only you will be able to access the UDF. You may consider having your system administrator configure a library so that others in the group can also use it. Refer to the previous document in this course. For this demonstration, I'll select the metric library. Enter a name for it and a part file name. Help page is optional and can be either a web page or simply a text file. Click Next and then select the features to include. I'll select the boss, chamfer, this hole, and draft feature, then click Add Feature. Click Next and then the parameters for each feature display. Select the ones you'd like to define when inserting this UDF. I'll select the expressions I want and click Add Expression. The name of each parameter also displays and you can change any of them by selecting the expression, entering a new name and pressing Enter. I'll rename the diameter and angle parameters to distinguish between the boss and hole. The Expression Rules radio option allows you to restrict inputs for each parameter. For the boss diameter, I'll select Buy Options, specify the available options, pressing Enter after each, and then click Done. This will display a drop-down with the values on the UDS dialog. For the boss taper, I'll activate Buy Number Range and specify a minimum and maximum value. This will display a text box and slider and restrict the input to the defined range. For the rest of the parameters, I'll leave them set to None, and a text box will display allowing any value. Click Next on the necessary references display, in this case a plane and edge reference. You can rename them or remove them if they are not necessary. I'll select the plane, which is the face on which the boss is created, and rename it so it makes sense when creating the UDF. The edge is the edge for the chamfer, which is the top of the boss, so it doesn't need to be defined. I'll remove it. Click Next and a summary displays. Review it and click Finish to add the UDF. Once you have defined a user-defined feature, you can insert it by selecting Developer tab, User-Defined Feature Group, Insert. Next, select the library by clicking Browse. After selecting it, the library is then available in the drop-down. With the library selected, all the UDFs display on the dialog. Click the UDF to display the dialog defined for it, along with the window with the UDF part. To find the parameters for the UDF, for boss diameter, only specified values are available. I'll select 10. I'll enter a height and define the boss taper. Note that the specified minimum and maximum values restrict this parameter. I'll enter the rest of the values. Notice that the default values are of the template part file I used when creating the UDF. The Resolve Reference List has the necessary references. I'll select the Boss Placement Face and pick this face on the solid. Clicking OK displays a positioning dialog. This is a legacy method. To use it, click a positioning type on the dialog and pick the necessary references. I'll click Perpendicular and pick this edge and enter a value of 16. I'll click perpendicular again and pick this edge and enter a value of 14. Clicking OK completes the feature and then you can just click Cancel to dismiss the user-defined feature library browser.